Hello and welcome to Open the YC Church's Reading the Bible Together. My name is Dom, I'm the pastor of the church, and it's great that you can join me as we finish off reading Deuteronomy, which is the book of the Bible that we've been reading through September. I hope you're doing well. We need to pray, and then we're going to dive into chapter 30. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who cares. You haven't abandoned us, but you care about our lives and how we live far more than we do. And you want us to walk in the way of life and the way of truth and wisdom. And we pray that your spirit would teach us now and guide us. Father, you know everything that's going on in our lives. And we lift up to you everything that's going on and pray that you'd be mercifully at work in it all. Please help. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, so remember this is Moses speaking to the Israelites before they enter into the promised land. Second attempt, take two. And we've just had the renewal of the covenant and the blessings and curses laid out. So let's pick up chapter 30, verse 1. When all these blessings and curses I have set before you come on you, and you take them to heart wherever the Lord your God disperses you among the nations. And when you and your children return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. Deuteronomy, like I've said before, is really rooted in everything that has come before the promises of God and fulfilment of that, but then so much lays out the rest of the story of the Bible. And here are the blessings and curses saying that they will experience blessing and then they will experience the curses. This is going to happen, but then there will be a, a return to the Lord and to the land. And it finds its ultimate fulfilment in the Lord Jesus Christ. But isn't it amazing that the Lord knows like centuries beforehand exactly what is going to happen verse 4 even if you have been banished to the most distant land under the heavens from there the lord your god will gather you and bring you back he will bring you to the land that belonged to your ancestors and you will take possession of it he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your ancestors the lord your god will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants so that you may love him with all your heart and with all your soul and live here is like the New Testament, the great fulfillment being promised here. Because when is it that the nation of Israel, the kingdom of God, will be more numerous, even more numerous than like David's time or S Solomon's time? When is it? Well, it's when true Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, the the faithful Israel has come and where he has borne the punishment for faithless Israel and he has grafted into himself all the nations of the earth through the spirit who circumcises our hearts where the law is written on our hearts and where we love him because of his great love for us. So I see verse five and six seeing as like it can only be true. Uh, in the New Testament times today. The Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies who hate and persecute you. That's verse 7. You will again obey the Lord and follow all his commands I'm giving you today. Uh, verse 7, by the way, Abrahamic promise. Um, yeah, a reality various times throughout the Bible. But it's uh, talking ultimately in terms of what's found in Christ. Verse 8. You will again obey the Lord and follow all his commands I'm giving you today. Then the Lord your God will make you mo most prosperous in all the works of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous just as he delighted in your ancestors. If you obey the Lord your God and keep his commands and decrees that are written in this book of the law, and turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Uh, there is a significant shift that happens in the New Testament, however, when it comes to the blessings. 
because we get a foretaste of heaven now, but we cannot name it and claim it. We do not take the promises of having loads of children and having loads of money and being, uh, in an earthly sense, completely secure. That finds its fulfillment in glory, when heaven meets earth in union. Uh, so it is true where it will be really literally the case but for now we have the promise of it this bit is powerful verse 11 now so that was talking about then but moses bring it right back into the present now what i'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach it is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it nor is it beyond the sea, so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Look up Romans chapter 10, because what is new in the New Testament isn't the grace of God. It isn't works-based righteousness in the Old Testament, meaning that you have to earn your salvation. No, it's always been all of grace. And the Apostle Paul says he's not coming with anything new. And all the apostles said they haven't come with it like a new teaching, a new way to God. He's just saying that Jesus is the fulfillment of what is promised. The time has come. Jesus is the Messiah. Um, so what, so that they were saved by grace through faith in the Old Testament. And here it is said, this isn't say this isn't difficult. <laughs> you believe in your heart and you profess with your mouth. Uh, look up Romans chapter 10 if you've got time. Uh, right, verse 15. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees and laws. Then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. What a choice we have. The Lord is like, here it is. You serve it up. What are you going to choose? And there's life. The Lord wants you to have life. It's found in Jesus. It's not difficult trust him and entrust yourself to him and he will write his law on your heart by his spirit but there's death in rejecting jesus verse 17 but if your heart turns away and you are not obedient and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them i declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed you will not live long in the land you are crossing the jordan to enter and possess this day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And that is so important as we think about the warnings and the curses and you think, why on earth is there all this and all the laws that deal with the mess of life? It's so that we would choose life because that is what God wants for us. The Lord is your life. Chapter 31, then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old and I'm no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you, as the Lord said. And the Lord will do to them what he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. The Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong 
and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them, and you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to the Levitical priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and to all the elders of Israel. Then Moses commanded them, At the end of every seven years and the year for cancelling debts, during the festival of tabernacles, when all Israel co comes to appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose, you shall read this law before them in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women and children, and the foreigners residing in your towns, so they can listen and learn to fear the Lord your God and follow carefully all the words of this law. Their children who do not know this law must hear it and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as you live in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So there's more than just the regular cycle of cancelling debts and the festivals and the tithes and all this. Preaching of the law is to be central because for them to be kept, to, to stay in the land and enjoy the good land that the Lord their God is giving them, they need to know the Lord and love the Lord and serve the Lord and obey his commands. And so they need to hear the law and hear of the Lord's love for them. Verse 14, the Lord said to Moses, now the day of your death is near. Call Joshua and present yourselves at the tent of meeting where I will commission him. So Moses and Joshua came and presented themselves at the tent of meeting. Then the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud and the cloud stood over the entrance to the tent. No one has ever seen God, but God, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. So that's speaking of Jesus. That's John chapter 1, verse 18. The Lord who appeared in the Old Testament has to always be who we know as our Lord Jesus. And it's interesting that Joshua is actually the same Hebrew name as Jesus. And so we have the real Jesus meeting uh, the little Jesus, <laughs> the divine Jesus, meets the mortal Jesus to commission him. And yeah, this is the angel of the Lord who appears in the, the cloud. The one sent from the Lord who is himself the Lord, who we know as Jesus, our Lord. Verse 16, and the Lord said to Moses, you are going to rest with your ancestors, and these people will soon prostitute themselves to the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake me and break the covenant I made with them. And in that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them, and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and calamities will come on them. And in that day, they will ask, Have not these disasters come on us because our God is not with us? But I will certainly hide my face in that day because of all their wickedness in turning to other gods. Now write down this song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it so that it may be a witness for me against them. When I have brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, the land I promised on oath to their ancestors, and when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. And when many disasters and calamities come on them, this song will testify against them, because it will not be forgotten by their descendants. I know what they are disposed to do, even before I bring them into the land I promised them on oath. So Moses wrote down this song that day and taught it to the Israelites. The Lord gave this command to Joshua, son of Nun. Be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them on oath, and I myself will be with you. 
After Moses finished writing in a book, in a book the words of this law from beginning to end, he gave this command to the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Take this book of the law and place it beside the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. There it will remain as a witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stiff-necked you are. If you have been rebellious against the Lord while I am still alive and with you, how much more will you rebel after I die? Assemble before me all the elders of your tribes and all your officials so that I can speak these words in their hearing and call the heavens and the earth to testify against them. For I know that after my death, you are sure to become utterly corrupt and to turn from the way I've commanded you. In days to come, disaster will fall on you because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord and arouse his anger by what your hands have made. And Moses recited. Is recited the right word? I don't know Hebrew very well. But I feel that um, he probably sang the song, didn't he? And Moses recited the words of this song from beginning to end in the hearing of the whole assembly of Israel. Listen, you heavens, and I will speak. Hear, you earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. Remember, this is the song that the Lord taught Moses and now the Moses his prophetic role is passing on so speaking of the word of the Lord isn't it it's not just Moses teaching this is the word of the Lord that is pictured like gentle rain that brings life I will proclaim the name of the Lord O oh, praise the greatness of our God he is the rock his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. They are corrupt and not his children. To their shame they are warped and crooked generation. That's a favourite catchphrase of Jesus describing this world that we live in. The generation that he lived amongst, but it's true of each and every generation. Warped and crooked. And that is the generation that I am part of. By grace I am saved. Is this the way you repay the Lord, you foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father, your creator, who made you and formed you? Remember the days of old. Consider the generations long past. Ask your father and he will tell you, your elders and they will explain to you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples according to the number of the sons of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob his allotted inheritance. In a desert land he found him, in a barren and howling waste. He shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye, like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wing to catch them and carries them aloft. The Lord alone led him. No foreign god was with him. He made him ride on the heights of the land and fed him with the fruit of the fields. He nourished him with honey from the rock and with oil from the flinty crag, with curds and milk from the herd and flock, and with fattened lambs and goats, with choice rams of Bashan and the finest kernels of wheat. You drank the foaming blood of the grape. Yeshurun grew fat and kicked, filled with food. They became heavy and sleek. They abandoned the God who made them and rejected the rock their saviour. They made him jealous with their foreign gods and angered him with their detestable idols. They sacrificed to false gods, which are not God, gods that they, gods they had not known, gods they recently appeared. Gods your ancestors did not fear. You deserted the rock who fathered you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. 
The Lord saw this and rejected them because he was angered by his sons and daughters. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children who are unfaithful. They made me jealous by what is no God and angered me with their worthless idols. I will make them envious by those who are not a people. I will make them angry by a nation that has no understanding. That finds its fulfilment in the gathering in of the nations into the kingdom of God. For a fire will be kindled by my wrath, one that burns down to the realm of the dead below. It will devour the earth and its harvests and set afire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap calamities on them and spend my arrows against them. I will send wasting famine against them, consuming pestilence and deadly plague. I will send against them the fangs of wild beasts, the venom of vipers that glide in the dust. In the street the sword will make them childless, in their homes terror will reign. The young men and young women will perish, the infants and those with grey hair. I said I would scatter them and erase their name from human memory, but I dreaded the taunt of the enemy, lest the adversary misunderstand and say, Our hand has triumphed, the Lord has not done all this. They are a nation without sense, there is no discernment in them. If only they were wise and would understand this and discern what their end will be. How could one man chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight unless their rock had sold them, unless the Lord had given them up? For their rock is not like our rock, as even our enemies concede. Their vine comes from the vine of Sodom and from the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. Their wine is the ven venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. Have I not kept this in reserve and sealed it in my vaults? It is mine to avenge. I will repay. In due time their foot will slip, their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon them. The Lord will vindicate his people and relent concerning his servants when he sees their strength is gone and no one is left slave or free. He will say, now where are their gods, the rock they took refuge in, the gods who ate at the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up to help you. Let them give you shelter. See now that I myself am he. There is no God besides me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. I lift my hand to heaven and solemnly swear, as surely as I live forever, when I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand grasps it in judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood while my sword devours flesh, the blood of the slain and the captives, the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice, you nations, with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his enemies and make atonement for his land and people. Moses came with Joshua son of Nun and spoke all these words of this song in the hearing of the people. When Moses finished reciting all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Take to heart all the words I have solemnly, solemnly, <laughs> declared to you this day, so that you may command your children to obey carefully all the words of this law. They are not just idle words for you, they are your life. By them you will live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to possess. On that same day the Lord told Moses, go up into Abiram, the Abiram range to Mount Nebo in Moab across from Jericho and view Canaan, the land I'm giving the Israelites as their own possession. There on the mountain you will have climbed, that you have climbed, you will die and be gathered to your people, just as your brother Aaron died on Mount Hor and was gathered to his people. 
This is because both of you broke faith with me in the presence of the Israelites at the waters of Meribah Kadesh in the desert of Zin, and because you did not uphold my holiness among the Israelites. Therefore, you will see the land only from a distance. You will not enter the land I am giving to the people of Israel. This is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, pronounced on the Israelites before his death. He said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned over them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came with myriads of holy ones from the south, from his mountain slopes. Surely it is you who love the people. All the holy ones are in your hand. At your feet they will bow down, and from you receive instruction. The law that Moses gave us, the possession of the assembly of Jacob. He was king over Jeshurun, when the leaders of the people assembled, along with the tribes of Israel. He was king over Jeshurun. I need to click on Jeshurun. I'm pretty sure it says, yeah the upright one verse 6 let Reuben live and not die nor his people be few and this he said about Judah hear Lord the cry of Judah bring him to his people with his own hands he defends his cause O be his help against his foes about Levi, he said, your Thunim and Urim belong to your faithful servant. You tested him at Massa. You contended with him at the waters of Meribah. He said of his father and mother, I have no regard for them. He did not recognize his brothers or acknowledge his own children, but he watched over your word and guarded your covenant. He teaches your precepts to Jacob and your law to Israel. He offers incense before you and whole burnt offerings on your altar. Bless all his skills, Lord, and be pleased with the work of his hands. Strike down those who rise against him, his foes, till they rise no more. About Benjamin, he said, Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long, and the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. About Joseph, he said, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth and the finest the moon can yield, with the choicest gifts of the ancient mount mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills, with the best gifts of the earth and its fullness and, with, and the favour of him who dwelt in the burning bush. Let all these rest on the head of Joseph, on the brow of the prince among his brothers. In majesty he is like a firstborn bull, his horns are the horns of a wild ox. With them he will gore the nations, even those at the ends of the earth. Such are the ten thousands of Ephraim, such are the thousands of Manasseh. About Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon peoples to the mountain and there offer the sacrifice, the sacrifices of the righteous. They will feast on the abundance of the seas, on the treasures hidden in the sea. About Gad, he said, blessed is he who enlarges Gad's domain. Gad lives there like a lion, tearing at arm or head. He chose the best land for himself. The leader's portion was kept for him. When the heads of the peoples assembled, he carried out the Lord's righteous will and his judgments concerning Israel. About Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's cub, springing out of Bashan. About Naphtali, he said, Naphtali is abounding with the favour of the Lord and is full of his blessing. He will inherit southward to the lake. About Asher, he said, most blessed of the sons is Asher. Most blessed of sons is Asher. Let him be favoured by his brothers, and let him bathe his feet in oil. 
The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze, and your strength will equal your days. There is no one like the God of Jeshurun, who rides along the heavens to help you, and on the clouds in his majesty. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will drive out your enemies before you, saying, Destroy them. So Israel will live in safety. Jacob will dwell secure in a land of grain and new wine, where the heavens drop dew. Blessed are you, Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord. He is your shield and helper and your glorious sword. Your enemies will cower before you and you will tread on their heights. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Mediterranean Sea, the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab. Footnote says, or oh, he was buried, but I reckon, I reckon that's some kind of hermeneutical gymnastics trying to get around the fact that the Son of God spoke to Moses face to face. He was literally there. The angel of the Lord was with him and he buried his servant, his servant's body and welcomed him into glory. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Pe Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for, them, for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, till the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all the, those signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials to, and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. I love these last chapters of Deuteronomy. If you're looking for more commentary, I'm sorry if you like my waffle. I'm not going to waffle on now. I pray that this book has been a blessing to you. And I'll see you next month as we begin the book of John, the Gospel according to John. Thanks for joining me. God bless.